Hey guys, welcome back to this topic. Uh, in this particular one, we'll be discussing how to analyze the needs for your production. Uh, now, because 360 rigs or uh, rotating rigs in general are pretty impressive to look at, you get to rotate them, it kind of looks nice. Um, you're able to have a lot of variety in the poses. Um, so it's something that people have a tendency to jump right away for the 360 and it can be a little bit of a double-edged knife. Yes, it's good. Yes, it works nicely. But at the same time, it is also much more complex than any traditional rigs that we've done in the past. Now, because these rigs are so complex, they require many different things inside of a production context. You will need to have the rigging team, of course, uh, as the, the first part that goes through making all of this possible using the 360, but this will also impact anything that comes after and even before. If you think about the design team, for instance, when it comes to uh, creating a 360 for, let's say, this character here, which we'll be doing, we have to take into consideration the design part where we will have our full rotation and have as many poses as possible and over here I have some head poses as well so we need to start thinking about those as well um, right in the beginning stages of creating our 360 the more poses we have of course the more variety your character is going to have but it's also a lot of work and that's really something that needs to be taken into consideration um, so people that throw around the words like, oh, this is going to increase productivity or, oh, this is going to uh, make things easier for the entire team. Not exactly uh, on point. You want to uh, consider this more as a, uh, a way to improve the quality of your animation. And it is going to improve if you have the right tools for it. Um, so if you have the right tools, if you have the right team as well, you have to consider as well the fact that 360 rigs require a more in-depth knowledge of the software, not just for the rig team, but also for the animators who will come after and use those rigs and animate them. There's a lot more pieces. There's a lot more deformation. It's also a little bit heavier because there is so much more to the rig that um, we actually have to keep that in mind. Now, if I go back to my character here, just looking at the sheer number of pieces that we have in here. Um, so every little object here is going to be a piece. Anything that moves is going to be broken down into its own piece. And very often in the 360, that's going to be a lot. Um, so we need to make sure that all these pieces can accommodate the different views here as best as possible without having to create too many new drawings. Now, once we have that, this goes over, as I mentioned, to the animation team. So the rigging team needs to be experienced and able to work with the proper tools we have the animation team that comes after, and then we move on to compositing as well, which is gonna to have to deal with that to add shadows and effects to those rigs. So it's all a big chain of uh, choices that we need to make. In addition to that, um, we're talking about the team right now and just how ready the production is for uh, creating those different assets. But there's a little bit more to that as well. You have to consider the project and the, the scope in general of how, uh, how big your project is going to be. Do you need to have a 360 rig for this particular project? So if the animation style is going to be something that's very stiff or not very animated, probably best not to get into a 360. Um, just to, to give you a brief insight on how long a 360 can take, uh, to create. It could take a week to create one. It could take three weeks maybe if uh, the complexity is high enough and you have shadows and all these depths uh, of details inside of it. So um, spending three weeks to create a rig 
where you have a lot of other characters or if you need to work a week for the animation might not necessarily be uh, the most optimal choice to make. So it's certainly going to look impressive at the rigging stage, but of course, uh, when you look at uh, the entire scope of the project, not necessarily the best decision. So you have to ask yourself, is this a long-term production? Is this a short-term or even a commercial? Um, am I doing all of this work for something that's gonna be worth it in the end? not just in terms of how much it moves and how the animation looks, but also creating um, this sort of character for, um, for a very short project might not necessarily be uh, the best way to invest your time. Um, so another thing as well to consider is if you decide to go for 360s, do you want to do that for every single character inside of the show? Because this is going to be very time consuming. So very often what I've seen is studios and uh, freelancers going more for creating the 360s for the main characters and then for the incidentals just going for a regular uh, rig with uh, different views that they're going to use and kind of modify a little bit to kind of get a smooth animation as well. All right, so I don't want to spend too much time discussing this. It is, of course, a very important matter to discuss. Uh, so make sure that you keep that in mind before uh, you go into a production setting and start thinking of doing a 360. These are all questions that you need to ask yourself. So without further ado, let's keep going. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video to start working on our 360. See you there.